Good morning, everyone. Good morning to all of you. My name is Mark Manis, and I have the privilege of being chair of the Department of Ophthalmology and Vision Science at UC Davis. I want to welcome all of you, uh, friends, family, faculty, hospital leadership, alumni, patients, and supporters of the Eye Center at UC Davis Health. I'm thrilled to be here with each and every one of you. I see so many current friends and old friends and former department personnel here. It's just uh, wonderful to be here. I do want to acknowledge a couple of people who traveled from very far to be part of the dedication. Melissa and, De and Ted Barr, who were here last night and are watching virtually this morning, came to us from Houston. Luis Izquierdo and his daughter, Rafaela, made the trip from Lima, Peru to be here. Uh, Luis is a former fellow at UC Davis and uh, is one of Latin America's premier ophthalmologists. To Debbie Roth, the cherished daughter of Alan Roth, whom we dearly miss, but we know how proud he would be of the department and the Ernest E. Channon Eye Institute building. This is a great moment in the history of our health system and a giant step forward for our deserving patients and for the physicians who care for them. After decades of dreaming of a state-of-the-art institute that would be the focus of leading edge care and creative vision science for the region and for the nation, we stand before this magnificent structure, the Ernest E. Channon Eye Institute. I'm pleased to open today's program with a brief video, the UC Davis Eye Center, the life that comes from you. I saw a, uh, a sign uh, in a flower shop that said, she planted a thousand seeds because she knew that if just one bloomed, it would matter. From our humble beginnings in the basement of the county hospital, UC Davis Eye Center department leadership worked hard to set a solid direction, to hire the best people in all positions, to attract talented trainees, and to engage with the community. But it started out uh, by four private ophthalmologists who wanted to get a very academic ophthalmology program in Sacramento. I think the initial credit should be given to Byron Demers. Byron was a leader. He was head of everything he was ever in that was ophthalmology. What I admire most about Byron Demers is how much effort he put into making this a great program. He was there from day one when I started, and two or three times a week he was there giving us of his time and service. And the Department of Ophthalmology was, it was wonderful. There were two full-time academic faculty members, and that was Dr. Jerry Portney, who was the head of the department, and Dr. Alan Roth. Yet at some point, the program begins to have a life of its own. That life comes from you. A dedicated researcher makes a breakthrough in stem cell technology that may help save the eyesight of thousands. The research vision group that's here is really one of the best in the country, if not internationally. It's sort of like a hidden gem that people don't really know about or talk about. Volunteer clinical faculty, who are central to the educational mission of UC Davis, take time from their own bustling practices to teach our residents, allowing us to provide our residents with diverse and well-rounded training that extends far beyond the walls of the eye center. Promising students transform into brilliant young ophthalmologists who improve the health of their communities both here and around the globe. Partnerships are built and collaborations ensue that profoundly expand the scope of vision science and patient care. Kelly and Wendell. Trained in the department, figured out a cure for the macular hole. From the beginning of my career, my, all my residency for sure, we saw someone with a macular hole, they were legally blind, there was nothing we could do about it. They were successful and they were the first in what has turned out to be 
a very important part of the surgical armamentarium for uh, retinal diseases. Generous donors step forward with financial contributions that fund everything from endowed chairs and professorships, vision research and scholarships, to small but important programs to our new state-of-the-art Channon Eye Institute building. Lo and behold, um, that seed now has blossomed into a new eye center. Thank you. It is now my pleasure to introduce uh, my boss, Dr. David Labarsky. David Labarsky is Vice Chancellor of Human Health Sciences and Chief Executive Officer of UC Davis Health. He oversees multiple top 50 rank entities, the UC Davis School of Medicine, the Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing, the UC Davis Medical Center, and the Children's Hospital. Under Dr. Labarsky, UC Davis Health the region's only academic medical center is focused on discovering and sharing new knowledge while providing the highest quality of care to patients delivering health equity to the underserved of Northern California. A favorite phrase of Dr. Dabarski is that UC Davis aims to complete, not to compete, with health allies in delivering the highest quality, most accessible, and cost-effective care possible to, care to patients. In 2021, Sacramento Business Journal recognized David Labarsky as one of the region's most admired CEOs. He is also a professor uh, of anesthesiology and nursing and a faculty member in the UC Davis Graduate School of Management. Please join me in welcoming David Labarsky. Wow, so many friends of this department and of Mark specifically. I am, I'm just awed and impressed and really, really happy. And it's not on my list, Mark, but I'm just, it's just amazing, right? The, I was telling someone earlier today that you're a mensch. And uh, I think that that's really why everybody's here because you, you're always doing something for someone else. It's really great. Um, Nothing really epitomizes more the new vision uh, for UC Davis Health than this building and this department. Our new vision is tomorrow's healthcare today. The next generation, the next innovation, the next cure. That's what we are here to do. And this department has an amazing history of training the next generation, of innovating. And uh, with the addition of Dr. Sieving, truly maybe curing issues that will lead to blindness that never uh, could have been uh, developed previously. It's, it's really amazing. And, um, and I'm also, a, just for the record, a client, if you will, customer of theirs. These are from their optical shop. And actually, uh, hold on, wait, wait. My transition lenses, they're, they're, they're from the optical shop. And at night, when I want to be a little more fashion forward, I had a little, right, that's also from their optical shop. I would show you my contact lenses, but they're so thin, transparent, and as fluffy pillows in my eye, I, I wouldn't be able to show them to you. You can't see them. Amazing. Anyway, I'm here all the time, and I can't tell you how important it is that my vision is better because of them. Trust me, when you see me drive, you'll say, it's good he's wearing glasses. <laughs> um, but in, in all seriousness, it is amazing, because I went to the little closet that was the optical shop so many times, and now I'm gonna walk into a lobby of a building that is truly a testimony uh, to the fact that 83% of our sensory perceptions come in through the eyes. And there's nothing more important than to actually keep or restore sight for any of us. And even if, as small things as actually getting the right glasses um, or truly saving someone's eyesight. I've looked forward to this day when we could all join together in person for the ribbon cutting for the new Ernest E. Shannon Eye Institute building. And uh, at the top of the list of people to whom we owe an enormous debt is Ernest Shannon. And Ernest, I offer you our highest gratitude for your dedicated dedication and your commitment through the last few years to this eye center and all its spectacular work. You're a remarkable and inspiring leader in the Sacramento community and UC Davis Health is fortunate to have an incredible partner like you. 
I want to also extend my deepest thanks to everyone who has helped make this dream come alive through their philanthropic contributions. You're creating a new beacon for world-class eye care and education throughout Northern California. And with your support through the years, it's no wonder that the Eye Center has become an international referral center for advanced specialty care. With a residency program that's been around since 1970, training the next generation of medical students, residents, and fellows in ophthalmology, the Eye Institute makes its and the department make its uh, presence known and felt across the entire world. We can achieve heights never before imagined because we now have an infrastructure and a building equal to the greatness of those who practice inside of it. Um, we always had great doctors, we always had great research, but we didn't have a great work environment for the ophthalmology department. Anybody who's walked through the old ACC building would know that we could do a little better, and, and we are. And so this new building is a perfect embodiment of our mission at UC Davis Health to deliver equitable health outcomes, to become a referral destination for all those who need our unique subspecialty care, and to restore and keep sight. Uh, nothing, like I said, is really more important than that. So thank you. Thank you, Ernest. Thank you, Mark. Thank all of you who have donated to this and all of you who have worked in this building at one point or another uh, for being such loyal UC Davis Health supporters. It's now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Susan Murin, Interim Dean of the School of Medicine. Throughout her 27-year tenure at UC Davis, she has held several prominent leadership roles within the medical school and UC Davis Health. She most recently served as Vice Dean for Clinical Affairs and Executive Director of the UC Davis Medical Group. As a professor and clinician in the Division of Pulmonary, Critical Care, and Sleep Medicine, she has been repeatedly named to the best doctors list regionally and nationally. And before joining UC Davis Health, Dr. Murin served as an officer in the US Air Force Medical Corps. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Susan Murin. Thank you, Dr. Labarsky. Uh, it's really an honor to be here with you and with everyone uh, today on this wonderful occasion. This leading edge facility, which I had the pleasure of touring yesterday, uh, will really enhance our ability to care for patients, lead groundbreaking clinical trials, and recruit and train the next generation of ophthalmologists. We are thrilled, as Dr. Labarsky said, that our extraordinary faculty will now have an equally extraordinary building in which to practice. With the leadership of Dr. Manis and the world-class faculty here at the UC Davis Eye Center, we look forward to pioneering new treatments and even cures for eye diseases. Our collective efforts are not only improving the lives of our patients, but it will have a worldwide impact. On behalf of the UC Davis School of Medicine, I express our deepest gratitude to Ernest Shannon for his tremendous generosity, uh, without which this wouldn't have been possible, and also to Dr. Manis for his tremendous leadership and stewardship in getting this to the finish line. The School of Medicine looks forward to our continued partnership as we train the next generation of physician leaders and improve, improve health through groundbreaking research and innovative clinical care. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce Sean Keister, Vice Chancellor of Development and Alumni Relations at UC Davis and President of the UC Davis Foundation. Vice Chancellor Keister leads our university-wide fundraising campaign entitled Expect Greater from UC Davis for the World. It's the most comprehensive campaign in UC Davis history with a goal to raise $2 billion to strengthen the university and improve the world. With the support of generous donors, UC Davis has achieved more than 80% of that goal. Please join me in welcoming Vice Chancellor Keister. Thank you, Dean Murin. Um, I'm thrilled to be here today to celebrate this new addition to UC Davis Health Campus. The Shannon Eye Institute Building Project is a shining example of the ability that philanthropy has to transform a department. When a donor chooses to partner with our world-class faculty to support research, teaching, clinical care, and service. 
Uh, I'd like to recognize several individuals who were key to this success. First and foremost, Dr. Manis. Um, I, I met with Mark. I've been here 11 years, and I probably met with Mark in my first month or two on the job, and uh, he was very clear, we need a new building. So uh, this is really your dream come true, and I know this is a very important day for you, Dr. Manis, and uh, I'm thrilled to be here to celebrate that with you uh, as a partner. I'd also like to recognize three individuals who were truly the catalyst for getting this building off the ground, Dr. Mike Shermer, Shelley Shermer, and of course, Ernest Shannon. Please join me in acknowledging their key role in making this a reality. Their confidence in our vision for this new building and their philanthropic support for the project have made it a reality. Ernest's hope in making this transformative gift was to inspire others to join him, and they have through support of this building as well as providing critical funding for teaching, research, and endowed faculty positions. Ernest is the largest individual donor in UC Davis health history, and we are grateful for his trust. Yes. We're grateful for his trust in us and his investment that impacts us now and well into the future. As Dean Murin mentioned, our $2 billion Expect Greater campaign is entirely supported by donors, and I'm happy to share that UC Davis Health is leading this campaign. Donors to UC Davis Health alone have contributed more than $430 million to date. So thank you for your continuous support on behalf of the university's mission. Now it's my pleasure to introduce Chancellor Gary May. This marks Chancellor May's fifth year at the helm of UC Davis. He has shown spirit as a true Aggie with his dedication for broadcasting UC Davis's strengths and shaping our path forward. Throughout his career, Chancellor May has championed diversity, equity, and inclusion in both higher education and the workplace. In February of 2018, Chancellor May was elected as a member of the National Academy of Engineering, one of the highest honors in the field. And last year, he received the prestigious Lifetime Mentor Award from the American Association for the Advancement of Science for demonstrating extraordinary leadership in increasing the participation of underrepresented groups in the fields of science and engineering. Please join me with a warm welcome for our Chancellor, Gary May. Thank you, Sean. Uh, as a future client patient of the ICENTER, I've brought my own remarks with increased font size. Uh, <laughs> I am honored to uh, have a part in this special occasion to dedicate the new Ernest uh, E. Channon I Institute building at the UC Davis I Center. And I'm honored to recognize Ernest Channon for his tremendous generosity to, to our university. The vision for this building has always been a bold one. Uh, seeing it come to fruition is truly inspiring. The I Center is a great standard bearer. It teaches multidisciplinary care and trains our students to be lifelong learners, which is more essential now than ever. With this state-of-the-art facility, our faculty will carry out their work and have global impact. The public is also greatly served as these brilliant minds continue to advance the field of eye care. With this new building, we are showing the world that UC Davis is serious about eye care, and, that's, uh, and that we're dedicated to supporting people's health today and far into the future. I'm incredibly proud of the Eye Center and the work being done here to prevent and cure disease through advanced research and care. All of this is thanks to the tremendous generosity of donors like Ernest Shannon, along with the 850 donors who joined him in making this vision a reality. We are deeply grateful for your support. On behalf of the entire university, I thank you. As I reflect on my past five years here at Davis, I'm proud that UC Davis Health has been recognized for its excellence. Uh, not only is the hospital among the nation's best for adults and children, it's among the top 10 hospitals in the state of California. The School of Medicine is also ranked among the nation's best by U.S. News and World Report, including top 10 ratings for primary care, diversity, and family medicine training, and top 20 for public health. Now I'd like to introduce another truly bold leader who just happens to be my boss. Uh, Dr. Michael V. Drake was appointed the 21st president of the University of California in August of 2020. 
He oversees UC's world-renowned system of 10 campuses, five medical centers, three national labs, more than 280,000 students, and more than 230,000 faculty and staff. It's a big job. Dr. Drake previously served as president of, of the Ohio, Ohio State University, and prior to that, he served in several roles at the University of California, including nine years as chancellor of UC Irvine and five years as the system-wide vice president for health affairs. Dr. Drake received his AB from Stanford, his MD in ophthalmology residency at UC San Francisco, and his fellowship training at UCSF in the Massachusetts Eye and Ear Infirmary. Uh, thank you for joining us virtually on this proud day. Now let's hear a, word, a few words uh, from UC President Dr. Michael Drake. Good morning. I wish I could be with you all in person for this wonderful ceremony, but I'm delighted to celebrate in spirit as you dedicate the Ernest E. Shannon Eye Institute building. As an ophthalmologist myself, I am particularly excited about this transformational center for research and patient care at UC Davis. I know firsthand the impact of vision research on human lives. And over the course of my career in academic medicine and higher education, I can tell you the tremendous value of philanthropic support for a world-class facility that advances critical research and clinical applications. To all the Eye Center faculty and the 850 philanthropic leaders shaping world-changing research and patient care at UC Davis, and especially to Ernest Shannon, I want to say thank you. Your transformative philanthropy is making the University of California a destination for ophthalmic care and vision science. Thank you again, and congratulations on this new beginning. Many thanks to President uh, Drake. He's been a great friend to many of the people in this audience, and we appreciate his thoughtful and inspiring words. Once again, I ask you to direct your attention to the screen as we enjoy another brief video, Gratitude in Focus. Our focus is trained on spearheading the development of new cures while providing exceptional eye care, training world-class ophthalmologists and vision scientists, and supporting community physicians through consultative care for the treatment of all forms of medical and surgical eye disease. The mothership, I think it was the mothership that, you know, the, the some, I can go there for advice, information for help with difficult patients. It's a great feeling. John was so enthusiastic and topped only by probably Mark. Two best chairs I've experienced actually in being in several different departments. The environment that's established by our chairmen in the past has led to faculty that again like to work together in groups, uh, like to collaborate on issues, and really want to make the whole um, department uh, succeed. We get along really, really well, and we're like a big family, so um, I think that's the big strength of this department. The UC Davis Eye Center has built a national reputation as a place where the world's top eye scientists are also some of the world's best clinicians, offering an uncommon level of compassion for each patient. But you get a little bit of the best of both worlds with UC Davis in that um, there's some extremely well-known faculty, as everyone knows. You can go around the country and people know their names. And They've done great things for the field, but it feels like you're still in a family. Born in Switzerland, Ernest Channon, 97, immigrated to the U.S. in the 1950s. In 2000, he was diagnosed and treated for glaucoma. When a combination of medications no longer controlled the high pressure in his eyes, he was referred to UC Davis Eye Center. Surgery and advanced specialty care stabilized his condition preventing further vision loss that continues to this day. I was very thankful to Dr. Michelle Lim when she treated my glaucoma, and I want to give back. The generous philanthropist has donated $18.5 million for the new facility and set an inspiring example to more than 850 donors who, like Ernest, brought our vision to life 
of a freestanding eye institute building that will be a place of medical miracles where caring physicians and advanced technology give those with vision loss hope and gives them a new, brilliant outlook on the world as they leave. The Eye Institute will say to the world that we've arrived as a force to be reckoned with in academic ophthalmology. Well, we can't forget our mission, which is to, uh, to cure blinding eye diseases. I'm eager to further express our gratitude to all the many people who make this department so special, which I'll do in just a bit. But I'm now very pleased to welcome to the podium my collaborator on this project from the very initial stages of planning and design of the building, Lance Durfee of Vayner Construction Management, who has also become a, a true friend to me and to the department. Uh, with uh, Lance, we'll be joined by Jeffrey Dill, project director from a, for the McCarthy uh, Building Companies. Please welcome Lance, who along with his team from Vayner, has served as the construction and design project manager, and Jeffrey Dill, who along with his team from McCarthy, has served the building contractor for our new Ernest, as the building contractor for our new Ernest E. Channon I Institute building. Lance and Jeff. I'm, I'm honored to uh, provide a few words and to follow some of the best public speakers I've ever followed. Um, why I'm so gratified to be a part of this project is really what it's going to do for mankind. Um, in the military, they call it force projection. Here, you think of the tens to the hundreds of thousands and more of our humans that are, their lives are they're going to be approved uh, by helping them with their vision. Um, also, um, would like to thank the donors who made this happen, you know, Ernest and all of your generous gift was the catalyst to make this project happen. And then we have just layers and layers of design and construction professionals that made this happen. Um, it's nice to be here, to be on schedule, uh, to have uh, weathered a global pandemic and all of the things and the uncertainty and still getting to this point and getting this point well. I um, just want to name a few uh, folks, um, my staff, Vanner, uh, the folks that worked long hours to make sure the project got there, uh, FDNC, who we work for. Um, I'm going to name one person in particular, Megan Lunsford, who's responsible for clinical services here. Um, construction, when you're building on to a 400,000 square foot uh, medical office building, it's always a balance between production and disruption. And if without her partnership, we wouldn't have succeeded. And then, you know, some of the other people that we've forgotten, you know, our initial designers who created the preliminary design, Architectural Nexus, who did a wonderful job programming and creating, you know, the adjacency studies. And then last and, and most importantly, in my 30 years of design and construction management, we had the most collaborative team we've ever had. And I really, my, my hat's off to McCarthy and our partners. Uh, we work together well, solving problems, always in a project first, best interest. And with that, uh, I really appreciate Jeff Dill and everything that McCarthy has done for the project also. Thank you, Lance. I appreciate everything you said. Um, I echo a lot of the sentiments that, that Lance had to say today. Um, actually, a lot of what I have written, he just said. Uh, so I'll do my best. But on behalf of McCarthy and the, the design build team as a whole, I want to say thank you for the opportunity to share in the celebration and welcome in the, the wonderful Ernest E. Shannon I Institute building to a great campus and to the community and soon to be, to quote Dr. Manis, a place for medical miracles. Um, as Lance said, we were constructed of an extremely collaborative, project-first thinking team, which is a lot of the success, which was allowed for a lot of the success to get us to this point today. Um, I want to thank Stephen Ryland, Vicky Vicente, Facilities Design and Construction for embracing and being an advocate for the design build delivery. Uh, that truly allows a fantastic group of architects, engineers, and consultants that we had on this project 
led by HGA and TEF to really connect at the very beginning of the project life cycle and work side by side with Dr. Manis, Dr. Lim, and Dr. Brandt and create that connection and that consistency throughout construction to give us the building and the functionality and the, the shared design and vision that we see today in the Ernest E. Shannon I Institute. Similar to Lance, I want to thank and, and say to Megan Lunsford and anyone and everyone associated with the ACC, thank you for your partnership, your trust, and most importantly, your patience as we constructed this building above you, below you, alongside of you, alongside of your operating facility. It was one of the most important relationships to maintain and keep strong, and I feel like that was a major success of the, of the story of the project. Uh, the, the overall design build team, thank you for, for everything, your commitment to the project from start to finish, uh, the McCarthy staff, my extended family there, uh, and most importantly, I want to take a second to recognize a group of individuals that isn't always talked about enough, and that's our, our craft workforce, uh, over 200 men and women uh, that really put their heart into this, this project and are part of the reason we can sit here and celebrate today, so thank you. So this building is the result of the dedication and hard work of many different people. Everyone here today has been in some way instrumental in bringing this building to reality. Not everyone here can be thanked by name, but I do want to mention a few of the key individuals who have contributed to the realization of this dream. We thank our previous leadership, John Kilter, Diane Weeks, Martha Barber, and Bob August, who really nurtured this idea for more than a decade. To Mike and Shelley Shermer, who believed in our team and our vision, and so generously supported the planning efforts. We also want to thank uh, the hardworking executive team in our department. Our Chief Administrative Officer, Cameron Blount, who has truly led these efforts for many months, to Jennifer Harder, our clinic manager, who is engineering what is going to be a challenging transfer into this new building, to my vice chairs, Michelle Lim and Jamie Brandt, who have labored through the details of this building month after month. Business coming to the Med Center. to our Executive Advisory Council, who is made up of patients, physicians, uh, community physicians, faculty, uh, who have really um, worked so hard to ensure that uh, this building uh, is realized. And I'd actually like the, ad the Advisory Council to please rise. All members of the Advisory Council, please stand up. Thank you so much. We also thank uh, former university architect Joel Swift for providing architectural leadership. Joel schlepped around the country with us looking for, at eye centers around the country to, to pick out what was best, what would make UC Davis shine among them all. So we thank Joel. Likewise, we thank the new leadership uh, here in campus, on the campus, Jason Natupski and his team for taking the flame and bearing the torch and helping us through to the end. As we mentioned to Lance Durfee and the Vayner staff, especially to Vadim and Valentina, who are always sort of in the background, but are making things happen. Uh, Lance, more than anyone, guided us through each step along the way, monitoring every detail of the process from beginning to completion. To our hospital administration, who have joined hands with us in the project. None other than Walt Disney said, you can dream, create, design, and build the most wonderful place in the world. But it requires people to make the place a reality. 
This building was conceived and, and, uh, by a dedicated and very skilled faculty who wanted a building that would serve our patients well. Indeed, while we have a beautiful new edifice, it's not the building that will make the primary difference, but rather the talented people who work in that building. We owe a huge debt of gratitude to the amazing faculty of the Eye Center, who with their knowledge, expertise, and compassion will breathe life into the halls of the new Eye Institute. I'd like the faculty to rise and let's thank them. Faculty. Of course, nothing happens without our wonderful staff and our bright and enthusiastic trainees who keep us on the edge. To the skilled leadership of our architectural team, I want to uh, recognize two people. Kevin Day, who is the architect who designed this building. Where are you, Kevin? Stand up. There we go. Kevin listened to us very carefully, and we went through lots of iterations of design. Uh, and I, he had a lot of patience with us because, you know, where there are two ophthalmologists, there are three opinions. And so we had to put up with a lot. Likewise, I want to thank Alyosha Verzhbinsky and the staff at TEF who have become not only uh, collaborators, but good friends. Alyosha and his team, likewise, listened to us day after day, week after week, and translated these ideas into what you see before you. Uh, and finally, to Kevin Black and McCarthy Construction, who with great care made this idea a physical reality. To the California artists, and I can't wait for you to see the inside of the building, to the California artists, a few of whom are our patients, our clinical faculty, our full-time faculty, and community ophthalmologists whose work grace and beautify the walls of the eye center that you'll see. To our truly amazing development team, Rebecca Sabotin and Kimber Chavez, led by the inimitable Aaron Bauer, right here. Yeah. Aaron, who Really, she's more than a development officer. She deeply cares about our donors and helps them realize their dreams. Erin, this is your building in so many ways. And of course, I have to thank my wife, Judith, <laughs> who, who listened day and night about this building. <laughs> and she provided unofficial but very wise counsel, kept me sane, and was my comfort in times of frustration. So thank you, Judy. And finally, uh, and perhaps most importantly, to our wonderful benefactor, my friend Ernest whose magnificent gift stands before us today. Ernest, you are an inspiration in your life, your vision, your immense generosity. Most of the individuals here today were inspired by you to participate in this building effort. And so to all of you and to Ernest, we express our thanks. Ernest, this gift will restore the sight of people for generations to come. There are no words to thank you enough, but know that when patients leave this building with restored sight, they are thanking you. Please join me in welcoming Ernest Jannon to the podium.
<laughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, most people probably know I'm a thankful patient of UC Davis. And that is very true. And I am very thankful I was able to help on the financing, which is kind of uh, unusual for a person like me because I emigrated as a poor engineer from Switzerland <laughs> about 70 years ago. And I was uh, kind of lucky to meet the right people. I uh, branched off from engineering to be, uh, as a hobby, uh, a real estate investor. And uh, I had a good broker. <laughs> His name is Peter Fliss from Marcus and Miller Chap. And I just can't not thank him enough for with the, what he has done for me. And uh, I, uh, I was just lucky to have met Peter Fliss that was about uh, 60 years ago, 50 years ago, in Rancho Cordoba, when he sold the building for me there. So that was really good. So I, uh, I'm glad I was able to help financially to finance the building, which was very unusual for me because I came, like I said, as a poor engineer, I was a poor as poor as a church mouse when I can. <laughs> but uh, it's okay, thanks to the good country here, of course, and thanks to the good people I met here. And uh, I hope, I'm looking forward that there are thousands of people coming here uh, to UC Davis to uh, get treated for some kind of a disease. And uh, I just hope and I'm sure uh, the thousands of people that come here uh, during uh, generations, they will be healed or they will come with a better health, better life. And that's what I like. They come with a better life. And uh, I just uh, hope it uh, will uh, inspire other people to do what I have been doing. And uh, I uh, hope it will be it will be a very successful uh, university. It already is a very successful university. But this is very important for UC Davis to have this wonderful new ophthalmology building, Ernest E. Chan and uh, Eye Institute. And uh, I, I just hope, and I'm sure it's going to be very much appreciated for uh, the thousands of people who come here. And uh, it's my wish that uh, it's going to be uh, a very successful uh, thing, what we did to have this much needed new building with all the modern equipment, which will be very much appreciated by the tenants. And I thank the people involved in this uh, putting up this building. I thank them for their efforts and hard work to get it uh, finished. And I just uh, cannot thank everybody enough for having it accomplished. And my favorite doctors from UC Davis are Dr. Michelle Lim and Dr. Mark Manis, and I thank them for what they have done for me. Thank you.
Thank you, artist. Uh, you have truly changed the world and the trajectory for many individuals through your vision and your generosity. I am pleased to share our final video, which I promise will also be very brief, uh, entitled Igniting Our Collective Power. The driving force behind the Eye Center's impact is our faculty who represent internationally renowned clinicians, scientists, and teachers of the next generation of physicians. Our leading edge facilities will make it possible to recruit and retain outstanding scholars who have the ability to think and create, to lead innovative clinical trials that may yield the next breakthrough in medical treatment, and to develop and nurture ideas from concept to reality. Having a good facility uh, makes it easier to attract quality people. As we look to the future of the Eye Center, our impact on vision care is going to be tremendous as we build on a tradition of leadership in translational science while leveraging the comprehensive strengths of a premier research university and health system. Eye Center faculty are positioned on the forefront of efforts to develop new treatment possibilities for everything from stem cell cures for inherited eye diseases to treatments that speed the complete healing of corneal wounds to comparative ophthalmology that decodes the evolution of diseases from animals to humans. The work that's being done for uh, optic nerve, either neural enhancement or neural regeneration is incredible and nobody is aware of it. It's clear that the old saying, it takes a village, certainly applies to the creation of the UC Davis Eye Center and the Ernest E. Channon Eye Institute building. This collective power of faculty, staff, students, alumni, volunteer clinical faculty, donors, and the community is so great that when we look to what wonderful accomplishments will occur in the coming years, there is only one reply. We ain't seen nothing yet. Winston Churchill said, we shape our buildings, and after that, they shape us. I really do believe that the building that you're about to enter in a few moments will have a profound effect on the lives of both the caregivers and the patients for generations to come. I'd now like to invite Chancellor May, Vice Chancellor Lubarski, Interim Dean Susan Murin, Vice Chancellor Sean Keister, Mr. Ernest Channon, and Michelle Lim to join me for the ribbon cutting. And Dr. Brandt will uh, come to the podium to do the countdown. All right, let's get everybody in position and I'm going to add, we're going to count down from five and I'm going to ask everybody to join me in this countdown. So all together, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, we're about to close. I do want to uh, continue with a very short video message from the uh, Chief Executive Officer of the American Academy of Ophthalmology, Dr. Stephen McLeod, who is also a member of the Faculty of Department of Ophthalmology at the University of California, San Francisco.
On behalf of the American Academy of Ophthalmology, I'd like to congratulate Dr. Manis, the UC Davis Department of Ophthalmology, and the entire UC Davis community on the opening of the Ernest D. Shannon Eye Institute. The UC Davis Eye Center has a proud and storied history as one of our nation's leading institutions for world-class clinical care in ophthalmology, residence and fellow training, and cutting-edge multidisciplinary vision research. The Ernest E. Shannon Eye Institute now provides the home for a great institution to achieve yet greater things with a state-of-the-art facility for clinical care, research, and teaching. This will be a boon not only for Northern California, but for our entire ophthalmic community. Congratulations on this special day. Thank you, Stephen. We are beyond excited for the opportunity to share a brief walking tour of the new building, guided by members of our staff. Uh, understand the building is not finished inside. There is furniture and equipment that are yet to be installed. The signage and wayfinding is still in progress. It's still a work in progress. I should say that our first patient day is going to be December 5th, so we still have a lot to do in transitioning the building. We hope that as you walk through, however, you will envision the future of this wonderful new facility with its beautiful art, a building that was designed, designed to make patients comfortable and hopeful and restored when they leave. We also invite you to continue to enjoy refreshments. For those of you who wish to go on the tour, uh, the tour of the building first, the staff is ready to take small groups from the tour sign, which is located right over there near the registration table. Tour, tour groups will depart approximately every four minutes. As a reminder, this is a clinical facility, so we ask respectfully that you wear masks inside the building. Once again, I want to thank all of you, uh, patients, friends, faculty, former faculty, former residents, family, for being here. This is a great occasion. Thank you very much.